It wasn't always like this around here. You don't need me to tell you that. Pubs, clubs, bars, hotels, businesses, right down to the man across the street selling fruit. Everyone's backs are against the wall. So if there's nothing to look forward to at the moment, how about for the time being, let's look back. Sukhumvit Road, the Route 66 of Thailand starts right here, just after the flyover at Plonchit. According to this old map, it was still called Rama 1 Road in 1946. I looked on Wikipedia, they tell me 1936. Anyway, one thing's for sure, the road to Cambodia kicks off right here next to Soy 1. Or is it Soy 0? In the 1960s, a businessman, politician and philanthropist called Lek Nana brought up a lot of land around here. He became known as the godfather of Sukhumvit and the area was named after him. This area's reputation for partying started in the early 1960s when several newly built hotels opened up bars and discos catering for the rising number of US military on R&R &R from the Vietnam War. There were a couple of clubs already established around here, but none could handle this number of young men that were flocking to the area. When the war ended, that demographic was replaced by American and European tourists whose ever-increasing numbers in the 80s made this place party central by the early 90s. Soy 11 is arguably where the real clubbing took place around Nana and clubs like Q Bar, Bed Supper Club were at the forefront of bringing well-known DJs from across the globe to make this place a real vibrant soy. But the number one place with the biggest cult following of all had to be Cheap Charlie's. Sukhumvit Road has had its fair share of headlines, urban legends and stories over the years. And if you're like me and you go looking for these stories to tell people in your videos, you would have heard a lot of embellishment, exaggeration and downright ridiculousness. But this next story is none of those. In fact, it's the most dramatic thing that's happened around here in the last 30 years. And it all went down one night in January 2003. This land right behind me was once an entertainment zone called Sukhumvit Square. It was bars, pubs, places to eat, drink, socialise, play loud music and dance. And one night it was all destroyed and razed to the ground after an internal dispute with the landowners that had nothing to do with anyone who was running a business in there. Sadly, a lot of people lost their livelihoods and a lot of money and it was far from a happy ending. On a lighter note, there is the urban legend of the blonde foreign man, not my words, who was running across the track scaring train drivers not long after the line opened in 1999. The story goes is that he was drunk in a bar one night and ran into the middle of Sukhumvit Road, climbing up one of these columns here while they were still being built, and he disappeared. And there is a possibility that he fell into the middle and is amongst all the concrete, but it was never investigated and it remains an urban legend.
from a visual point of view, Assok intersection has changed a hell of a lot in the last 30 years, mainly down to the SkyTrain construction in the 1990s, which completely reshaped, revitalized and modernized this area into the sleek looking metropolis that we see all around us now. And you could easily be mistaken for thinking you're actually standing at a road junction in Singapore, but I'm afraid that is where the compliments end. And it is still essentially the intersection from hell that was a nickname given to it in the 1980s for obvious reasons. I suppose the modern equivalent, you could call it the Junction of Jesus Christ, which is what you would hear most tourists shout when they realize that the artistically painted pedestrian crossings mean absolutely nothing. These shops here are the oldest buildings left around Asok intersection. They have withstood all redevelopment in the last three or four decades, including the last major project, which was Terminal 21. That was expected to sweep everything up in its path, and it didn't. These shops are still standing firm. This row of shops actually goes from the Namdari Sangha of Thailand down to the corner of Sukhumit Road. In amongst all of that is the Asok market. So we're gonna pop in there and see how things are looking. As expected, it's pretty quiet in here. The only signs of life are the rats and the cockroaches scuttling around. And there's one business open, that is the Peng Lee Indian Grocery Store. Let's be honest, it's seen better days around here. And the last time I was here when it was busy was 2006, and times change. But it remains to be seen what's gonna happen when things reopen, I suppose, in the next few months. <laughs> 